This is a story about two big problems and a big opportunity. Just outside of Glen Arbor, a heavily traveled roadway is imperiled as it crosses three sets of undersized culverts crumbling into the Crystal River. That's a big problem for transportation. Here's Brendan Mullane, Leelanau County Road Commission Manager. Yeah, I mean, the culverts, they're not failing tomorrow, but they're gonna fail. You know, there's a couple of areas that are is starting to cut out on the upstream side. You're getting a head cut around the pipe itself. We need to plan now so it doesn't become an emergency. Here's DJ Shook, biologist and project manager for the Conservation Resource Alliance, with a closer look at one set of these failing culverts. During higher flow events, what we'll, what we'll set up is what they call a recirculating eddy, where you'll get water that just kind of circles in a vortex and that puts higher velocity water right up against the stream banks. So you can see there's been a lot of uh, stream bank erosion right up adjacent to these road stream crossings. And then also you'll get that erosion happens there. It also happens in between and this looks like a fix because you'll start getting piping down along and the water won't be going through the culvert only. It'll also be going around the culvert and that can be a big problem for roads. It can just all of a sudden fail from a sinkhole occurring right under the road and it can be quite dangerous. The second big problem is ecological. For decades, undersized culverts have pinched the Crystal River, creating barriers to the passage of wildlife and fish and human paddlers that use this picturesque stream corridor. Here's Brett Fessel, a restoration specialist with the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians. Fish, mink, wildlife, turtles, you know, all a spectrum of species use these corridors, these river corridors, as prime highways or pathways themselves to move th through the landscape. Just like we need roads to move across the landscape, they also need those, those corridors. And by filling in that road prism and, sh and pushing the river through a series of pipes, not only are you excluding the species that might crawl along the bank or on that floodplain going across the landscape like mink and turtles, but then fish in the stream, their challenge is because it's shoved through, you know, this big area is shoved through a small pipe. It's coming out the other end at a very high velocity. And most fish species in, in the Great Lakes are not the strongest swimmers and especially juvenile fish. Andrea Palladino is a civil engineer for the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service. In a healthy functioning stream, you have um, a natural geometry and morphology that exists. The morphology is the interaction with the water and the stream um, materials, the sediments. In a system like this one, where we've got multiple culverts that are undersized, we've got high velocities, we've got perched conditions, we're changing that morphology and creating a large uh, scour pool where the energy is getting dissipated, but as you can see, it's increased for a while. And so once it gets past there, it's also then depositing that sediment um, right as, this, as the water starts to slow down in velocity. So we're altering the stream morphology at the crossing, which then alters the ability for the stream to provide um, the necessary conditions for aquatic organisms of all different kinds to navigate upstream. Scott Tucker, superintendent for the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, points out that in addition to ecological harm, these culverts force paddlers into dangerous situations. The undersized culverts create swift water that some of those native fish can't, can't pass. Uh, it also becomes a wildlife barrier for, for turtles and river otters. It also becomes a safety issue. Um, hundreds of people canoe or, ca or kayak the Crystal River during the summer every day. And for their uh, enjoyment of nature is bisected by portages across a very busy roadway. 
Fixing these road stream crossings will cost millions of dollars, well beyond the budget of the Leelanau County Road Commission. The opportunity to solve these problems has been created by a partnership of organizations. Our consulting engineering firm, Gosling Zubek, has been in the design phase of these bridges for uh, several years now. And the intent for now is a timber bridge replacement, which is uh, very important in a lot of ways and matches a lot of the other bridges around. Uh, it's a very tried and true method. The timber bridges really fit well into this area. They'll look natural, they'll blend in. It's not gonna jump out like a big blob of concrete. For a positive outcome for our, our stream crossing is to have a stream that's functioning like it would without the road present. So in the design process um, and in our practice standard, we're looking to mimic what the natural geometry and morphology of the stream is. The project partners and the consulting engineers have designed three bridges along County Road 675 to replace the Crystal River culverts. Timber bridges will be used in two places where paddlers must either portage across the road or shoot the tube. Paddlers will easily pass under the new timber bridges. The undersized culverts closest to M22 Highway will be replaced by a concrete and steel bridge. All bridges will span the whole river channel and a portion of the floodplain called the Bank Full Area to manage for high water events and provide wildlife passage. A small, easily clogged metal culvert for the overflow of Tucker Lake will also be replaced with a larger and more durable aluminum box culvert as part of this larger project. The engineering designs are, are completed. The next steps will then be to finalize our fundraising effort, which we do have likelihood of fully funding with uh, dollars not only from the Resource Conservation Partnership Program through the NRCS, but also through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIA Roads Program. Once we get the bids back, we'll work with the county then for a uh, road traffic control plan to go to construction. And construction is slated somewhere for 23, likely in the fall of 2023, that will allow for the, the lowest amount of river traffic to be discontinued or uh, inconvenience. Yeah, one of the most, uh, most complicated issues in a project like this is uh, just traffic management during construction, the phasing of construction. And we have canoers in the river and we have cars on top. Um, we want to minimize the impact to the river and to the roadway as much as physically possible. Restoring fish passage at this site by opening up the crossing will not only allow fish upstream, but it will restore the natural sediment transport and replenish the point bars downstream which will in turn help the higher flows create deeper pools on the outside bend. So there's a lot of different processes that will be restored, including upstream passage of fish and aquatic organisms once this uh, road stream crossing is restored. One of the goals of the National Park Service is to preserve and protect our natural and cultural resources for future generations. The Crystal River, although a small piece of Sleeping Bear Dunes is a pretty important piece of that. Our goal of preserving and protecting that is part of the ecology of the region and a pretty important piece of why we were created. Thus, in 50 years, we want to ensure that it's still here.